My money don't jiggle jiggle, it falls. Very well, and why are we filming this here? Oh, look at this, ooh, ooh yeah, exactly. look at the purse. Oh, oh she stood up, she stood up. Yeah, yeah I farted. Where? <laughs> you go there. I'm recording, sir. Are you in 25? wedding? So you can see the rig and everything? Yeah, now I can see. All right, she just dropped it. So today is equipment testing day. We haven't had the chance to actually use the R5C on any real shoot lately. I mean, just for behind the scenes and stuff. So I really wanted to give that thing a try. We also built a complete V-mount rig. We also filmed the entire rig tour. So this is going to be up on the channel. And we also got a new drop in ND filter from Mikey. And that is a pretty cool tool. And that we're also going to test today. So a lot of testing. So we have Bell here. It's nice and sunny. And that is the vlog. So overall, I love this. Like, just take it. Yeah, if I were to use this camera more often, I would definitely get a scrub. I like it. It's cool, right? It's what see? I see. See how balanced this is? That is a nice balanced rig. All right, I'm filming you just right where you are. Just stand there and look pretty. Is that an option? Well, you're gonna say anything about the VND? So far, I like it. It's a really good option, especially because it's really bright outside. One thing you can really do, which I was hoping you could do, is gradually change the VND so that you won't see, as, uh, see it in the footage. But since the wheel is so tiny and so sensitive, it's quite hard to actually but isn't make it that work. Because you have like one millimeter, it's like boom. The problem Four stops with ND field is only that size and you have 1.5 to 9 stops. Yeah, and it's so like you need to cover a lot of ground and like a really small I do like space. the cage. The biggest problem you have with that thing though is that this is 1.5 to 9 and it also comes with a clear VND so you can just like exchange it for one that is no ND. The problem is that the cage is in the way. Yeah. So this. Fuck. And there's no other cage so far? I mean even if there's another cage, where else would that be? Because yeah. there's the cables and everything. Okay, let's film some more. Shit! Alright, stop. Okay, it lost your focus. Interesting. Yeah, because the sun is there. But it's the R5C. Do it again. All right, should we do a moving shot? Moving shot? All right, can you stand here, like the walking shot? You have to say funny stuff? Yeah, Not exactly. possible today. Not smiling today. Yes, I am. I have to. Shut up and do your work. Okay, just out of curiosity, I want to do the same thing with the C70 now. Just because Can you also do a I shot? want to see a comparison. So just looking at the two cameras side by side, I mean not looking at it, but using both cameras side by side, I have to say I enjoy shooting with that rig more than with this one. I feel like this is more compact, it's light, it's... Maybe it's just a, a cage? Yeah, but with the C70 there's so much stuff sticking out of every side, whereas even though I have basically all the same things on here, I think this is a little bit more comfortable, not gonna lie. Is it though? Look arrogant. But you are arrogant. I am. And not... <laughs> 
<laughs> Another thing I like about this rig compared to the one on the C70 is that with this one we have the option of just using the external screen so we don't have to worry about the screen breaking off or anything because we don't need the screen to flip out in order to access our audio controls like we do on the C70. So overall I feel like the R5C is a little bit more flexible when it comes to everything. Also because of the mount we have all the possibilities whereas with the C70 not so much. But again I have to look at the footage but overall I like that. And I like the ND filter too. Again it's like way too sensitive. I think it gets better. Oh yeah it gets a lot better when you're on the lower stops like I don't know like two to five stops. But as soon as you go to like I I would assume six to nine stop instant. So that's something I don't like as much. My money don't jiggle jiggle, it falls. This is riveting content, by the way, guys. Riveting content? We're looking at the footage. What do you expect us to do? Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah, exactly. look at the purse. Oh, oh she stood up. She stood up. Sell it to me, mate. Right? One, two, shoot a little bit of non-bell b-roll, meaning like some location shot. Let's do some close-ups, like some, some real nice, in your face, literally close-ups. Oh, look at that bokeh, it's a good bokeh. Oh. Bokeh status? Good. good. So we've been filming for about, what, like half an hour now? 35, 45 minutes? And the Vimon battery is completely full. It's Can like, it almost didn't use up anything. And I'm powering the monitor as well, so. That is good. Yeah. Yeah. What are these sounds? Oh, that was, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Film into the reflection and see what that ND filter can do. Ooh, that ND filter is strong. No complaints there. The camera froze. The camera had enough. It doesn't do nothing no more. Oh, oh, maybe it does something. The screen is black. We are going to find food and then come back and find the sunset. Uh, That's what I said. Sunset. A few moments later. So far, the ND filter is working very well. I don't see any cross polarization, even with the 16 millimeter on a full frame sensor. I don't see any green tint, no color shift at all. So overall, I think that ND filter is working very well. And why are we filming this here when there's so much noise in the background? What are you doing? Testing the ND filter. And I try to go very strong. This ND filter is so freaking strong, it's weird. It says it's one to nine stop, but I feel like I can close it down way further than that. It's also not good with it. I just wanted to test that lens for the vlogging purposes. If I can see the microphone on the rig, I can... So I'm going to change lenses now again. Actually, let's take some pictures. Another thing I wanted to film on that vlog is the other Mikey adapters, the regular ones without the ND filters for photography or for other cameras and if they work as well as all my Canon lenses uh, adapters. So this one is the one with the control ring. So far feels like the Canon one. So one thing I don't like about these so far is that I can't really see where I have to put them. It's on the inside but there's nothing on the outside. So that could be improved, I guess. So, R5. So, 85. 85. So, it seems to be working. It seems to be doing what it's supposed to do. And I even feel like it has a little bit more haptic feedback than the original from Canon, which I actually like. 
it's also a little bit louder when you turn it which is also something i like because then you notice more when you do it on accident which i sometimes do on these controlling things because i have that mapped to changing my iso settings when taking pictures let me see let me see i cannot see something I think you just farted, but okay. It yeah, sounds it's, like it, right? you, you did fart. Yeah. yeah, I farted. Okay, I mean, I just wanted to test these with the Sigma lenses, and that works pretty well, actually. So, I mean, there's not much more to it. Build quality is pretty much the same. I like the haptic feedback. It does what it's supposed to do, so good, at a fraction of the cost. What? Look at this. It has a USB-C port inside, so you can it? probably... Do an update or what? Yeah, make an update. That's cool. Program it, maybe even adjust the focus or something if something is off. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And now I can film you with the DC tower. It's not me. It's really not me. <laughs> it's froze again. It froze again. Nothing. I mean, there's a firmware update for the R5C. I saw it the other day on a forum. Yeah, but for the hair flip thing, you have to go closer. I don't think shit. Okay, that is annoying. Annoying? Let's hope that the firmware update... Probably the firmware update is gonna do some stuff. What if it doesn't? But what if it doesn't? No, not lower, more up, more closer to me, you know? I'm really close to you. Like... <laughs> <laughs> down? <laughs> down. <laughs> Should I show you when I film you go there? You go there. <laughs> Where's the menu button? The one that says menu. Says menu. Yeah. No, it says initialize me, yeah, so... Oh, nope. <laughs> nope. That, Please that don't. One. See, that's what the shot I meant. That was the shot you meant. Yeah, look, it's nice. It's a nice freaking shot. Put it in there. <laughs> Come on. Right, <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Put it in the vlog. That's good. Stay like this. I really like the angle and the foreground, but I don't like that pole in the background. And it's a wrap. So the summary of the day is that I really like that R5C rig. I actually have to say that I enjoy shooting with this one more than with the C70, which was a really big surprise to me, because this feels more compact and more like an, a baby C300. The C70 is a little bit clunky and there's cables sticking out everywhere. Anyway, I was actually impressed. I'm really curious about the footage. The battery solution was bonkers because we shot almost all day and we still have 50% battery left, so that's great. The adapters worked as a charm. The ND filter is actually pretty great. I couldn't that's really awesome. see anything that didn't really work the way I was intended to. So overall, success. And again, I haven't really figured out where to put the R5C in our productions in the near future. But that could actually become our travel small gig kind of camera. And I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up because we really had to channel and grow. Subscribe for more. And I hope to see you on the next one.